If somebody told you that they thought an Indian fish market was beautiful, you'd probably think they were crazy. And you've probably heard people talk about beauty that they see in math or in physics or chemistry, biology, all the beauty that surrounds us. Well, I find beauty in economics and I think there is just this beautiful case of Indian fish markets. This is a graph of Indian fish markets. And even though it looks like a cardiogram and it looks like someone has died, it is one of the most beautiful charts in economics that I've ever seen. That's where this thing comes in. That's where this thing that transformed the Indian fish markets comes in. And it's something that I think that you'll love to understand. It's something that I'm just so excited about. This graph has its origin in Indian fish markets in southern India. This is in the state of Kerala. Along the coast, there were some fish markets. And in the late 1990s, economist Robert Jensen was recording fish prices. And he went all along the coast and he was finding markets that were about 15 kilometers away. And here is just one day of data, one really interesting day of what happened in some of these markets. In these four markets that were about 15 kilometers apart, that's about nine miles apart, you saw sardine was selling at 10 rupees per kilogram in this market and then you went down to the next market and it was zero and i mean literally zero what's happening is people are showing up and no one is willing to buy their sardine and then they have to dump it out into the ocean and then if you go 15 kilometers again down the coast you're seeing one that is 10 rupees per kilogram again so you have this weird issue where you have places where this is selling at a high price. Now, how high is 10 rupees per kilogram? That doesn't really make sense to me. Fortunately, we can see that about a dozen buyers showed up and fish was so expensive that they went home empty handed. And then, you know, zero is something that we can relate to, but to give you more, like in this next market, right next to it, about a dozen fishermen were throwing their fish back into the ocean because they couldn't find someone to buy it. And so you have these two markets right next to each other where one has too much fish and the other doesn't have enough fish. There are buyers in one, there are sellers in the other. Why aren't these people getting together? Well, a key question to this is how far is 15 kilometers and how much do we expect prices to differ in that amount of space. And so I actually went out and I tried this. I went and looked at gas prices for gas stations that were 15 kilometers apart. Markets work so well here, at least most people who are able to watch these YouTube videos, you're probably in a place where markets work really well. And that can make understanding economics or even Indian fisheries really, really difficult. And I'm gonna show you why. I am here at a gas station and gas is 201 right now. Yeah, it's 201 right now, which is incredible to think about. I'm gonna drive to a gas station 15 kilometers away, nine miles. I just topped off and we're gonna see how much gas it took me to get to that gas station and what the price of that gas is at that gas station relative to this one. While I'm driving to the next gas station, I want you to just think, what do you expect the difference in gas prices are gonna be? If I take the highest gas station and subtract the lowest gas station, what is the price difference between these two for a 15 kilometer distance, nine miles between two gas stations? And that answer is something important for understanding these Indian fish markets, because if it's something large, then this doesn't look that weird. But if we expect it to be small, we might wonder what's going on in India. Okay, I had to move to a place that had better lighting, but it's amazing. I just drove the same distance from one gas station to another that you find the average distance between these fish markets that I'm showing you. And the price of gas is exactly the same here. Two dollars and one cent. So the question I have is why are gas prices at two gas stations located nine miles apart exactly the same but fish prices in markets located the same distance in India, why are they so different? I, it just happened to be that they were exactly the same this day that I went to go look at. I don't know if that's normally what happens. And you can imagine that there would be some differences, but you can also imagine that there can't be too big of a difference. Let's say that gas is $2 a gallon at one. How big of a difference can we expect at the other gas station. If they're not gonna be the same, how far apart can they be? 
Let's just throw out a number. Could it be $10 a gallon? No, that doesn't seem right because if you went to that gas station, you saw that it was $10 a gallon, what would you do? Well, you would drive to the next gas station, right? And that actually tells you how far apart these prices can be. It has to be related to the cost of traveling from one gas station to another. At $10 a gallon, it's probably gonna be worth the cost of driving nine miles to get to the other one. But what is that cost? So here's the amazing thing. I filled up to see how much gas it took me to get from one gas station to the other. And the difference was 75 cents. 75 cents ends up being really convenient because my car holds about 15 gallons. And so that means that cost me, like the savings for filling up 15 gallons would be about five cents per gallon by switching to another gas station. So at $2 a gallon, if I can't find a gas station that's cheaper by five cents, it's not worth the cost of gas to even go all the way out to there. Not even to mention my time, right? So five cents is about the biggest discrepancy that we could expect among gas stations. And this is actually pretty close to what I saw on my drive down. So the cost of travel could lead to difference in prices at different markets. Is that what's happening here in India? Well, if we were relying on roads, sure, we would be, we might be able to make that case because especially in the late nineties, roads in India, in this area, not that great. But we're not talking about people driving between top markets. We're talking about fishermen who are already out at sea where they're going, they don't need roads. Well, this economist actually went out and hired people to drive boats to see how much it would cost to go up and down the coast. And he found it would cost 400 rupees to go up and back. And in exchange, you would get 4,000 rupees. The revenues far exceed the cost. Your profits are pretty high if you could just go up to that next market on these days where it's zero in one market and 10 rupees per kilogram in the other. So travel doesn't really make sense because it's definitely worth their time. So what is it? Why are these prices so different? Imagine that you are one of these fishermen, you're out at sea, you catch all your fish and you're trying to figure out where am I going to sell these things? That's where this graph comes back into play because this first part of the graph, the one that's going all over the place like it looks like a cardiogram, that is the different prices every day across these different markets. And what you see is they're swinging all over the place. Some of these people are down at zero, some of them are up at 10, it's just going wild. And that means that you don't know when you're going back to shore what the price is at your market. You know that maybe it's gonna be zero, maybe it could be 10, but you don't know exactly what you're gonna get, let alone what you're gonna get at the market 15 kilometers up the shore. So, what do you do in that case? Mostly you just go home. You're just like, I might as well save the cost because if I go to this other market and it's zero, and I have to dump out all my fish and then tr travel all the way back, I'm wasting tons of fuel. I would rather just go home. If it's a wash, I'll just stay home. At least I didn't have to pay the extra gas, right? So you kind of have this bias towards just going back to your own market instead of exploring and trying to figure it out. So this would be called an information problem that you just don't know what the price is in other markets and it's really expensive to figure it out. That's where this thing comes in. That's where this thing that transformed the Indian fish markets comes in. It's gonna blow your mind. I know it's gonna be something that you totally don't expect. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. It's gonna totally blow your mind. Boom. Cell phones. Cell phones are what changed these Indian fish markets because now there's a cheap way to figure out what prices were in other markets. And what is beautiful about this paper is that it uses the timing of cell phone market expansion to look at access to information on prices. So these different markets along the coast, they get access to cell phones at different times. And by access to cell phones, I mean cell phone coverage. You know those maps that these cell phone companies are always bragging about? Those maps don't spread equally. So one region got cell phone coverage early, another a little, few months later, and then one got it last. And what you see in each market is that when cell phone coverage hits, that crazy price bouncing all over the place, flat lines and prices equalize because people are calling up, what's the price in this market? Where should I be going? And they end up where they need to be. And then supply and demand all just end up in equilibrium 
And I am just not kidding you. When I look at this, I, it's just so beautiful to me because no one is coordinating this. Like you don't have some central figure telling them this is where you need to go. All you did was just put technology in their hands. And these fishermen realize I can get, make more money off of my fish if I can just figure out where the demand is. And prices respond, like this is all markets, right? Prices are supposed to tell you where supply goes. Prices are pulling people and it all equalizes. Instead of bouncing all over the place, you get nice, consistent prices in all of the markets. These are the kind of things that just make me look at economics and think, how beautiful, how amazing is it that markets work like this? And that is what I make these videos for. This is a community of people interested in and excited about economics. And if that's you, definitely consider subscribing and checking out some of these other videos that I've made here at Market Power because this, this is where you need to be. Let me know what gets you excited about markets down in the comments below. We'll see you.